Hey, what is up? Dalton from MSI here. And if you've been wanting to upgrade the webcam image quality for your live streams or for your online video meetings, I'm gonna show you how to do that today with some help from Sony and Elgato. I'm gonna go over some of the different camera types that Sony offers, as well as a few of the types of capture devices from Elgato. Typically, USB webcams are very simple and easy to use. However, the image quality usually isn't the best from USB webcams. They have been getting better over the years, but they typically can't compete with cameras like these that I have here. Even this handy cam from 2010 will provide a better quality image than most USB webcams. Now when you plug in one of these cameras into a computer, it will only access the storage and show you what you have shot and saved with the camera and not recognize it the same way it would a USB webcam. If I wanted to use one of these cameras that I have here as a webcam, I'm gonna need to pair it with a capture device like one of these from Elgato. Simply put, these Elgato devices take the HDMI signal from the cameras and converts it into a usable video source that your programs like Discord, OBS, or Zoom will recognize. Here I have three different types of cameras. The Sony ARC0, the A7R4, and this Handycam I showed off earlier, each having their pros and cons. If you don't have a lot of room for a larger camera on your desk, the RX0 is extremely compact and, in my opinion, provides a greater and sharper image quality compared to other cameras in this size. However, the lens and aperture are fixed, so you won't be able to zoom in or out or adjust the size of the aperture. One of the reasons why you might want to change your aperture is to control how much light will hit the sensor. If you don't have a lot of lighting, increasing the size of your aperture will make your image brighter given that your ISO and shutter speed values remain constant. Another reason is that a wider aperture will also give you a shallower depth of field, which will give you a nice bokeh effect and blur out the background, drawing more attention to your subject. The second option here is a camcorder. Most camcorders should be larger than the RX0, but with a camcorder, you'll have the option to zoom in or out, and on top of that, you'll have a flip out screen that will allow you to quickly check to see if you're in frame. The third final option is a mirrorless camera with an interchangeable lens. These can range in price from as low as $500 with models like the Sony a6000, all the way up to thousands of dollars like this a7R4 that I have here, which might be a bit over the top to use as a webcam, if you ask me. If your setup allows it, you can even throw on an 85mm lens for a very pleasing portrait look. A quick side note, if you plan on purchasing a new camera for this setup, try to see if the specs call out whether or not the camera will output a clean HDMI signal. Sony mirrorless cameras will have the option of toggling a clean signal on or off, however, some entry level cameras will not have this feature. If it doesn't output a clean signal, your computer will receive a video image with a camera settings overlay on top of it. Now onto the Elgato devices. The first thing I would consider is what resolution do you want to use? If you have a 4K capable camera and want to output in 4K, you'll need a 4K capable capture card like the 4K60 Pro Mark II, which can handle up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. There's also the HD60S Plus and CamLink 4K, which can handle up to 4K resolution at 30 frames per second. If you're on a laptop, you're restricted to the USB devices. However, if you have a desktop with a free PCIe slot, you'll be able to use either type. Take our Aegis RS for example. It comes with a free PCIe slot where a 4K60 Pro can fit right in. This will also reduce the amount of cables needed when compared to the HD60S Plus since it transfers the signal to your computer via the PCIe. One benefit of using a PCIe device like the 4K60 Pro is stability. If you have a lot of USB devices plugged into your system, all of those USBs are sharing the same amount of bandwidth. PCIe devices use a separate bandwidth pool, so it won't have to fight with your USBs. The CamLink is by far the easiest to use if you're just hooking up a camera to use as a webcam. Connect the camera to the CamLink via HDMI and plug the CamLink into an open USB slot, preferably USB 3 or better. The concept is the same with the HD60S Plus and the 4K60 Pro, just make sure to connect your camera to the HDMI in on the devices. These are usually paired with consoles, so there's an HDMI out that allows you to pass the signal through to a monitor or TV so you can play normally. You can connect as many of the Elgato devices to your computer as it allows and it will recognize them all as their own separate source. 
That's gonna be it for this video. If you wanna learn more about Sony, Elgato, or the MSI products that I use in this video, check the links in the description.